We are done with the chlor detector. This one was all made out of space, individually space rated parts, except for this guy. This guy is just to run it off 5 volts. Otherwise, if it runs on 12, you don't even need it. Uh, it masses uh, less than 40 grams, as promised. And it can speak uh, either TTL serial, which should have let it connect to pretty much anything, or USB with this little adapter which itself is uh, 3 grams you see here the camera is down here the filter is right on top of it this is the laser with a uh, linear driver this is thermally self-regulating this is just a big monster I think I could probably use a smaller one but I figured let's overkill everything so let's uh, connect this. I wonder if I connected it right. Now note that this does not have the tilt switch, so uh, the laser can't turn itself on when it quote unquote shouldn't. It won't, but in theory it should. It, it, it should be able to. So for testing, we got here, uh, you know, an actual leaf, some green things, and if you remember, we were having a problem with. Uh, green fluorescent things giving you a false positive I'm happy to say that this has now been solved as I will now demonstrate so this program that you see here this is just a control program all the image processing is done on board so let me connect to it connect to busy of course I'm not responding Again. There we go, now it's connected. So you gotta turn on the laser manually. Uh, you can also do it programmatically, obviously, but you know, safety first. And we're going to uh, receive a frame from the uh, camera directly. Again, it can take regular pictures, normally, it won't because it does uh, signal processing by itself. So you can see here the um, you know, the detected the chlorophyll here. Now I'm gonna turn on, um, I'm gonna turn on uh, image processing here. You can see here, let me see if I can get both in the, both in the frame. And even when I am aiming at, you know, like a, a screen, even when I'm aiming at the green part of the screen, as you can see, you can check out the histogram on the left side of the screen. And he means the right. This is not a problem. And even if we have a fluorescent, it does still pick some off, but you can see, especially the green bar, the it never quite touches the floor, whereby with actual chlorophyll it will touch the floor and go a lot higher. So we have solved the false positive issue. In addition, the uh, camera is, is slightly angled so that you can actually detect distance. You can actually detect distance using this if you absolutely need to. So this is basically the entire system working as intended. Again, 40 grams. Here's it working. Uh, for the record, just for fun, it can do color tracking if you absolutely tell it to. So, for example. Let's uh, let's get a frame here, and let's request color tracking again. The color tracking is somewhat primitive, however, this is all done on board of the device. The computer is only showing results here, so you can see I am tracking it. Uh, I am mo now moving the camera up and down. Let me show this correctly here. I don't know if you can see the. This can be used to estimate distance so that the size of the actual patch can be used to estimate uh, concentration. For that we have um, a histogram obviously, which I'm running it in one bit mode which doesn't exactly do much for us. That's more like it. And for the histogram use the red channel, here we get nothing. And here we got something, and you can just have it as these. 
Most importantly, I'm using the highest, uh, you may want to zoom in there, to, this is our false positive. You can see that I am picking up a little bit at the highest levels, which does not happen if I, if I have a false positive. Even though the rest of the curve looks similar, you do not get the oversaturation on the channel that you would otherwise. You can see that's nice and blank. I'm going to move it to the leaf now and you should be able to see a little bit of it and there it is. So this is the end of the demo and this is what I believe will fly. All we have to do is we have to replace this. This is the only part, this blue part here, uh -huh. only one that's not space rated. And it, this is optional, it's just to drive the laser off uh, USB. If this thing was running on, five, on uh, 12 volts, it can run on anything up to between 4 and 12. You don't even need this part. And that's the end of the demo.